the skip recap button. That's right, I'm sending the Amazon interface for allowing me to skip a part of the show that I've previously sinned. Sure, it looks all sexy and convenient, but it offloads the administration of this experience onto me. This is essentially the digital equivalent of the self-checkout lane at the supermarket. Stop trying to automate perfectly good jobs. Plus, my hands are currently occupied with stuffing artificially flavored cheesy popcorn into my face. And I'll not risk the sanctity and cleanliness of my remote by handling it while my hands are covered in what feels like a mixture of Elmer's glue and climbing chalk. Do we have to see the Immortals decapitation every damn time? And why am I still trying to eat Taco Bell while watching this show? I might have a problem. Show has Bryant mumble, step on this scorpion, throw a cigarette at this guy, and push past this crowd instead of just giving him an apple to prove how much of an asshole he is. Now I have to give this three sins instead of one. Also murder. Discount John Ham. Only one snap and no shake? That's just blatant disregard to the established glow stick activation procedure. There is no way it would be this luminous. Oh my God. He's resurrecting a whore. What did Discount said Epo think Discount Indiana Jones was up to? Nothing good comes from opening mummy tombs. There's an insane amount of examples in other shows and movies. You could have done some f***ing research is all I'm saying. My first thought was that this door fell into place by sheer luck. My second thought was that one of these guys just happened to be proactive enough to shut the door on this nightmare. My third thought was that Omni-Man threw this door into place as he and Invincible were flying by. Finally, my fourth thought was giving this moment a sin because I'm pretty sure five thoughts would have caused a Nexus event and frankly, I don't have time for that. Messing up the desert. Huh? <laughs> J.K. Simmons, man. J.K. f***ing Simmons. What happened to- Gain some altitude! Messing up the desert. We're closer to the surface now than Invincible was when he was kicking up the sandstorms. Wait, where's Mount Everest? It's the high one! Dad directions. Take hey, deep breaths, buddy. The air's thin up here. Show's already established that Invincible's lungs are too strong for this to make any sense. In episode two, he held his breath during a lengthy flight in space, then a conversation in space, and then took time to stop and enjoy the view from space. Why would breathing be a concern here? Sometimes I forget how beautiful this planet can be. Too bad the human race is hell-bent on destroying it. Look, if I wanted Captain Planet, I'd watch... Well, Captain Planet. This login screen has no forgot password link. Considering how much effort went into writing these articles in episode 2, I was really surprised that the show went with this lorem ipsum nonsense. But, judging by the glowing circle forming in my living room... Reading that Latin text aloud may have been a bad choice. I'll deal with that later. Amber and Mark appear to be traveling in the same direction, despite the fact that Mark's legs are clearly angled at least 45 degrees to the direction of travel. They're called balls. Throwing a hard B on your balls? Slow hanging fruit. Maybe you came to finish the job you started with the Guardians. You're the demon, after all. That's demonist. If you threaten my family again. Cliché. Run the jewels or not soundtracking my daily activities in this scene. This very sophisticated device, used to make clones, runs on frozen hamburgers. We're cool, right? Don't know. Don't care. Skip! Alienating Adam Eve was the direct result of your lapse in judgment. Do not repeat it with Monster Girl. Since the show's been pretty well written so far, I'll presume this whole scene is a setup for something. That being said, this is gross. And even though Rex even explains why it's gross... What are you, crazy man? She looks like she's 14! That doesn't make the choice to put it in the show any less gross! Now that I'm a guardian, I can bang anyone I want. Using your position in the corporate ladder to gain sexual advantages. I like dealing with work stuff. Yeah, and I love that about you. Oh, please, you. don't give me that sh Marriage. Mark is not trying at all to conceal that secret identity, which makes his conversation later with Eve about telling Amber who he is all the more odd. What if Amber had forgotten to tell Mark something or opened the door right here or a neighbor was out walking their dog? I don't like Mark missing school. This is Debbie's worry? That Mark will miss school? Not that he'll be going to a planet humans have never set foot on, or that he'll be in space for the next two weeks where just about anything could happen? But yeah, missing an English exam. Real bummer. Sure, but it's not like dating Rex worked out. Mark survives this. You help me with my Amber stuff, I'll help you with your Rex stuff. How exactly would Mark help Eve with her Rex stuff? Can he go back in time and stop Rex from being a cheating asshole? I don't think he can. I figured you need something. That's a nice gesture from Mark, but where did he get the $800 that turned him off from buying the ball in the first place? I'm I'm going away and helping people. This works. First off, just look how f***ing cool this space shuttle is. Second, look at how aerodynamically unsound these rocket boosters are. I may not have the time or education to properly calculate drag coefficients, but I assume rectangular cuboids have either lots of drags or lots of coefficients. Stay out of sight unless something goes wrong. I'm a ghost. Even as a ghost, the people inside can probably hear you tap dancing across the outside of their ship. There are Martians? Where do you think Martian Man came from, Jupiter? Cecil would be invincible at TV sins. Martians? 
Way to bury the lead, Cecil. Actually, the lead is make sure our astronauts get home safe. Technically, Cecil still buried the lead. He didn't mention this till after the Martian talk. I know you're all tired of me preaching about Kessler syndrome, but when you're done playing with your villains, you can't just leave them floating in orbit. It's a disaster waiting to happen. As I noted earlier, Mark has already been to space once, but didn't take note of the temperature or think that maybe sandwiches don't work in the vacuum of space. They land the ship for a second and hop straight the f*** out. This is Mars, not a rest stop. Don't you have to check with Fido first or some sh**? This extra is staring right at the camera. No landing! Do you trust me, Debbie? Considering the convenience of this dragon popping up literally right behind them while they're in another country, if I were Debbie, I'd be thinking Nolan set these shenanigans up. So the answer is no, Debbie. It's f***ing no, I don't trust you, Nolan. I guess the good thing for Dark Blood is no one will ever ask him to be on plant watering duty while they're out of town. Other humans in white, are they like you? Aliens conveniently speak English cliche. Alone, the group mind is scattered and weak, but with an appropriate host, they become unified and unstoppable. Snyder Bros. How exactly is Mark protecting the astronauts? He's giving them zero cover. He should at least be running behind them. Ah. Oh, hey, you're back early. Invincible doesn't even need his key to open this door, which is surprising when you consider how paranoid Nolan was when Cecil showed up earlier. But more importantly, Nolan and Debbie deserve a sin for going to Pound Town with the front door unlocked when you know you have a teenage son who could just come home at any moment. But more importantly, the last time we saw these two, Nolan pretty much refused to save people from a fire-breathing dragon. And apparently Debbie was super turned on by this. This is a sin because I used to like you, Debbie. See? That's the problem with demons. You only see good and evil. Black and white. No, the problem with demons is they never pick up their toys. Oh wait, that's kids. Same difference. Finally. Phase one begins. But what the f happened to the mummy from the beginning of the episode? Now this is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. For the last time, join me or die. Don't you dare shush me. Just know I have a whole bag of shh with your name on it. That was the best night of my life. I'm about to eat nachos! It's the greatest moment of my life! Calculating landing ellipse. Based on our last uncorrupted nav state, I'd say we're somewhere in this 60 by 120 kilometer ellipse. We just gotta close in on the downrange variables. It's about the math. This is it. That moment they told us about in high school where one day algebra would save our lives. Don't open that! It's an alien planet! Is there air? You don't know! What is your purpose here? Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Blow the bomb, Harry. We're with you. Guess what Donald found when we searched your office? Tiny pies? Say I'd see you in hell. We have such sights to show you.